show you the differences between your version of the code and somebody else's version of the code. You can decide what you want to, to merge in. Um, if you're just a sole developer, it's also really useful because it allows you to, in a sense, put you know, a stake in the ground and say, right, I've achieved something now. I want to lock that in, go on and do some more experimenting. And if you find your experiments don't work, you can roll back to the previous version you had and subversion. Um, so it's a very, very helpful tool for keeping track. So what I did today, you're going to see five different versions of this component. I did that in subversion. I was able to create the steps, export each of them as, as they came along. So I can now just go back whenever I want to see any of those sets of files, and you can make those modifications later very easily. You can download the files from, um, I've got the wrong hmm. URL there, uh, repository slash admin. Um, in fact, the URL you want is a bit easier. I've got a flash drive here. You need, you need the files, files. Um, and you, you just, just take, take them off the flash drive. Onto the machine, pass the flash drive on. Um, it's a zip file called res recipes underscore unzip. Unzip.zip. So there's five separate zip files inside that. So just unzip those. And I'll uh, change this slide before sending them to um, Laura so you'll actually get the correct URL to be able to download them whenever you want. Um, then, uh, yeah, I'll show you a little bit about how to um, package them up later. There's a very neat little trick for um, facing in this all. Package all the moments again, tying in the subversion. Um, I'll explain a little bit about that at the end if we have time. Oh, I have got the URL on here. Next, next, next slide. Uh, so you can download them there, or what the zip drives are going on here. Um, so has, has anybody got laptop uh, web servers or anything? Who has a good web server that actually follow along? That would be amazing. So what I'm going to do is basically say, yeah, okay, install now, install the next version, and uh, follow along. We're going to build five separate versions. First of all, the basic skeleton, which just outputs, hello world. The nice thing is that Juma does quite a few things for you out of the box. So we're going to be able to handle categories and permissions with almost no coding whatsoever. So we can basically go through with that version 0.01. Then we're going to talk about some of the foundations of how to do the recipe management, building some of that. We won't be quite finished until we get to version 3, at which point we'll be able to manage the recipes in the back end. We'll be able to create new recipes, list the recipes, edit them, unpublish them, and do what we want. Then in version 4, we're going to start looking at the front end, do a bit of navigation of the recipes we created at the back end, uh, look at the parameterizing the menu item, how that works. And then finally, in version 5, we'll get to the point where you can actually add recipes in the front end. Um, and we'll add a few attributes to extra recipes there. And hopefully, we'll get to that point at the end of the day. So, uh, in, yeah. if you watch cooking, cooking shows, you know, there's always a here's one I prepared earlier, one that produces an amazing looking dish out of the uh, oven. Well, um, oops. Yeah, so if you've got a uh, web server, can you install version 0.0.1 now, which is the basic skeleton? And what I'm going to do is explain, this is basically what you need, in essence, to start any component development. So, now, if you're going to do component development, then you can take this file now, and in fact, maybe version 0.03 or even 0.05, depending on what you want to do with your component, just rename some classes, rename some files, and you'll be good to go with your component. So, Place to start. So here's the basic file structure. We have um, the back end, we have admin files, site files. Um, so I'm going to move away from my vocabulary. So you've got assets, which are things like uh, style sheets, JavaScript files, images, controllers, we'll come to in a minute, and help with these special files inside of Joomla. Language files in the development environment, we're going to have the language files in our development folder as opposed to in the root language files of Joomla. Um, models, models and tables we'll come to in a minute. SQL, we're going to be using for installing. And then you have controller recipes. Basically, this is the landing point of the application. Access will control the permissions. Configuration will control the configuration. That's the parameters. And there, just chop it up like these recipes or XML. That's really what's controlling the installation. But I'm going to go through all that in um, more detail now. So what this is going to actually allow you to do is 
in the back end, install it and run it, and it should just give you hello world and the front end uh, hello world there as well. So I'm going to do that as well for my machine. equals com recipes and we've got just hello world there so nothing nothing's not doing anything useful so far but remember I was saying to you that categories is very clever so if we click, click on categories we actually have most of the capabilities we want for creating categories in uh, Joomla already we can create a new now we can enter in let's say we're gonna have soups and starters to start start our starters and soups and uh, great Start for the meal. Spell and read screen. Save that one. And then uh, when we create another one now as well, we've got the main courses. The middle bits. Save that for close. And the new one as well, we make the buildings. So we now have three categories for our recipes. Now the neat thing is that we actually have got almost no coding required to do that, which I'm going to show you in just a second. And that's basically all that recipes 0.01 does. And now I'm going to show you what that actually, how that actually works. Let's see if I can So, first of all, we're going to start with the Joomla multiple vehicle collision, which is what NBC stands for from there. <laughs> um, model view control is not multiple vehicle collision. Um, basically, uh, people are familiar you must have heard of NBC model view control being bandied around this weekend. Um, basically, the controller handles the interaction with the browser. The model, the very simplistic basis, handles data objects and interactions with the database, and the view handles the presentation of the output. So that's in essence uh, what we're talking about. Um, so with that in mind, these are the files that we have in the back end of version 4.1. Um, I don't think there's a point in it, so I have to go away from the mic again. Um, we're going to have all these files. These are the main files you'll see in the back end um, if we're installed. We have recipes.php, which is the landing script, and that's where you start. So if you just do index.php, option equals common underscore you know, recipes in the back end, that's the first file that Joomla attacks. That then handles hands on process to the controller.php, which is the main language controller script. Um, so maybe that's a good place to start looking at the code. We'll look at the recipe store. So um, this is now can people read that in the back? Do I need to make the font a bit bigger? Yeah. Yes, you can read it, but yes, the font a bit bigger. <laughs> so, yeah. Is that again? Or bigger again? Okay. Okay. So this is NetBeans. And um, I'm going to go 
going to administrate components down to no recipes, and there you see the files that we have. And as I said before, recipes.php, the file is named after the components, it drops to the com, and that's the landing point for the script. Now, because this is the back end of the code, the first thing we can use is either Joomla access control um, bit of script to basically make sure that nobody who doesn't have access to manage the components in the back end can do anything with this in the back end. So that's just a sanity security check. Um, then we've got uh, importing the control file and then three lines of code, which uh, is pretty much all we need in this file. It gets an instance of the recipes controller. It then executes the task and then it redirects. So um, there's a, I'm going to be using a lot of uh, standard Joomla library calls, like get j request, get command. These basically handle the interaction with, for example, the j request is handling the interaction with the URL. So when it says get request, get command. So j request get command is looking for the task from the URL or from the post, if it's a posted form. Um, and then it redirects after its process. So the controller <coughs> goes off, does its bits, passes it on to the view, and then it comes back and then it, the controller says, what do I need to do? Or I need to redirect to some, some other page. And that's really all the controller is doing at this stage. It's basically saying, right, what sort of controller am I? What am I going to do? And where am I redirecting after this happened? You, know, you, you don't need to understand all of the details of this now. Obviously, if you're new to this, you know, don't worry if you don't understand various stages. Hopefully, you get a flavor of what's going on, and then maybe start working through it in more detail later. All right, now I'm going to show you now the controller. So you've got a controller.php file here. So you see it's called, the class name is recipes controller, and it extends J controller. So J controller is the default controller class within Joomla, and the recipes controller, uh, we are extending that and modifying some of the recipe, the, the methodology. So if you're familiar with um, object oriented programming, the J controller class is basically giving you a lot of functionality, and all we have to do in this class is in, uh, change anything that we want to change. So we've actually got one method in the file at the moment, which is display. And what are we going to do in this file? If I can open it. Uh, all we're doing is adding the submenu. So we're calling a helper file, which we're calling our helper class called J recipes helper, add submenu. And um, the one that we want, we're passing in the view that we're using, which is by default recipes. Now, just to give you a little neat thing about uh, NetBeans, this works in a lot of IDEs. I can just hover my mouse over that sub menu, click on it, and it goes directly to the file where that class is declared. Um, it actually is declared, but the mouse over here, you'll see. It's in, that's the wrong one, it's uh, in store for It's in. Helpers recipes. So let's call the name next. And the next. We're adding some menu. All we're doing here is again using a Joomla method. You basically, what you really need to do to get started with this stuff is to take something that somebody else has developed. You, know, you wouldn't be expected to write this component from scratch without another foundation, which is why this for skeleton is handy. You know, I'm giving you here the methods that give you submenu. So we see, you know what the submenu is in the back end? The little bar with um, the recipes and the categories appears underneath the main um, block and above the main, the main uh, icon bars. And basically, there's, there are methods like for adding entries to that. Um, we have here, to make sure that it's international from the very beginning, we can add. Um, we're using JTEX. Are you familiar with using JTEX? Have you used it before? Basically, what that means is that you uh, tell Joomla, translate the string, com recipes, recipes, translate the string, com recipes, categories, and we then have, if we have a language file, it automatically gets translated into where it's being done. So it's good practice to start off with making your application multinational or multilingual from the very beginning, so you don't need to translate the data from all. Uh, saying, I need to make it Spanish now, but we, 
I've already written all the linking between what I'm going to do. Give me a little example of that if you use this JTEXT handler. So in other words, never use plain strings, always use JTEXT first. Um, so we're adding the submenus and we're basically saying if the, this line here is the view name, which is being passed in the top, is categories, we want the title to be um, uh, categories title instead of the um, recipes title. That's basically what the helper is doing there. So let's see this screen here. So I've used it to two monitors and I'm moving my mouse to the, uh, to the left and I need to move it to the right. It's very confusing. So we've got the, we've got the controller and the helper. So if we go back to the page, the next file we'll look at? Access to XML. Yeah, this is about permissions, okay? So, we go back to access to XML. So this is an XML file. A lot of components are going to have very, very similar versions of this file here. Let me make this um, enlarge this. So there, the way these are defined is we have sections. This is the component section, so this is the recipes themselves. And we have the category section, so we have permission set for categories, permission set for components. And these are defined, these are the fairly standard ones, which are administration, which is basically things like changing the configuration. You know, you're, if you've got this permission, you're god for that component. And manage is being able to get into it in the back end. Creating, deleting, editing uh, recipes, in our case. Edit state is where you can archive it, publish it, unpublish it, so forth. Edit own. We talked about that uh, yesterday. The basic edit is the permission to be able to change your own. Now we see if you've been a lot of people contributing recipes to your um, recipe book, then you know, people might want to change those if they've got the, the wrong sort of flower. You don't, you don't, you don't want to be handling people sending you messages to say, I've got the wrong flower in my recipe, but I'm not allowed to edit it. You know, so editing your own is basically something you want to enable. And you've got the same sort of permissions on categories. This is not the permission to do things to categories themselves. This is going to be the permission to do sort of things to recipes within categories. So I'll show you how that works now. Because there's no PHP to this, this is a good thing. In the categories here, if I can open up recipes and start the soups, and pick a set of permissions or scroll down, you see here we've got create, delete, edit, edit space, edit own. These are, uh, people seeing this screen in the back end, basically, for this category, what people can do. So this is all being driven, this section is all being driven by that category section of permissions. Oh. And if I go back now to look at this, I go back to the recipe overview, and click on options. Um, basically, this section here is all about the permissions for the uh, component of the recipes. So, you know, if we're looking at the permissions of the manager group, we've got the actions which are uh, configure, which is the label we've got for um, the core admin, and then access the components to the core manage, and you've got create, delete, edit, edit state, and edit home. So, this is all given to you just by creating that XML file. Do you remember that does that for you? Right. What was the next bit of code? Uh, this is the file now. So you see on, when you load your into components, you've got the options button here. All that's doing is if I hover over, you can see at the bottom, this is calling actually as uh see so the URL you see is here is com config and it's we're passing in component equals com recipes. So again, this is a something that Joomla gives you, you don't have to write this. Joomla, if you define that config.xml file, 
It really gives you the way to parameterize and customize your parameters before you don't have to write it. So it's another little handy thing to have. Um, so what's the next file? The view file. View.html.php. And that is. <coughs> let's scroll off the edge of the screen here. That's this file here. Um, this is the main view file. So again, if you follow the pattern of having your folders with the same folder names, same file names, view.html, and the same uh, class name structure, so in this case, what we have here, this word here, recipes, is because we have common recipes. Then you've got the view, and then recipes is because we're looking here at a list or a group of recipes. If we call this home frogs, and we were then uh, looking at recipes within common frogs, because we're looking at recipes cooking with frogs, we would have frogs view recipes. So uh, slightly confusing how many recipes are recipes, but this is the common underscore bit, and then this is the view that we're actually looking at. Um, uh, what are we doing with this? We're doing two things in the view. Again, remember, this is overriding. Uh, the display method. So again, JView handles a lot of stuff for us. We don't have to, you know, we could actually get away without this file altogether, and JView would do it for us. But what we want to do is we want to change the display. We want to add a style sheet, because I'll show you why in just a second. We want to add the toolbar um, to it. So what's happening with the toolbar? I'll show you that very quickly. Well, I suspect this is going to be the longest section, by the way. Uh, Version 2, 3, 4, and 5 are implemented on this. So if we've got this foundation line, we'll do this a bit faster. So what are we doing with when we're adding the toolbar? Um, we are, first of all, setting the title for the page. And we're setting it to be Cold Recipes, Recipes, translated by JTEXT. And we are authorizing, um, again, you know, slightly overkill, but we didn't actually have to, um, no, sorry, let's step back there. So ignore what I just said. Or admin, that's basically, do we have the right to change the configuration of this component? If we do, then we have to add the preferences icon. So that's what we're saying there. Do we have the, am I logged in as a user who can change the preferences if I am? And then I give you the option to change the preferences. If that makes sense. And then a little divider, a little vertical bar or a space, and then we have the help. Um, now I haven't written any help there, so if you actually install it, if you click on help, you'll get to. Uh, an old page. But you can basically have, um, you know, this can be on your site, it can be on the user site. Um, if you use JTEXT within the um, URL, then you can actually split that URL, you could have the languages, you could actually have multi language um, help files as well. You could have a German help file, a French help file, a Spanish help file, and um, on your own server. Uh, so that's a good tip. So, what does that translate to the back end? Inside the back end of Joomla. Um, here we have the options for practices because I'm logged in as a super user, I see that, and I've got the help button appearing there. And the toolbar is basically where we've got recipes overview, which is the translation, and that style sheet, all that style sheet is doing is giving me my little octopus chef um, icon. So you can see, you know, I won't go into detail, but if you looked in the CSS file, the image files, and installed with the scanners, and you'll see that um, there's a particular way that Joomla defines that icon. So if you want that nice little icon, um, you get to pick that. And also, um, yeah, keep, keep the sequence is strict. Uh, progression of what we're using. Default.php. Right. So within the, within the view structure, you have views, you have views, and then you can have several views. In this case, because we're only listing numbers of recipes at once, so we have the one sub view. When we get to later view versions, we'll have other folders inside here. When we're listing, we're looking at a single recipe, we might have a folder called recipe um, there as well. TMPL is the template file or the layout file, um, and within that we have defaults. And that's the name of default view. And you see here, hello world. So when we look at that in the back end, that's where the hello world file is coming from. So our view.html file. Um, so that is 
So the new HTML file is just calling the method parents display. That just goes off and figures out that it needs a file called default of and then calls it and displays it. So again, if you follow these naming patterns, you'll have something that works. When you then understand that and happy and comfortable with it, you can then start experimenting with the <coughs> and uh, um, refining further. But there's not, not enough time to go into all in that much detail today, unfortunately. So let's go back to uh, installation file. That's the nice juicy one. Yeah. Um, this file is not going to change at all throughout the presentation today because I thought about what we wanted up front. So we don't need it. Um, we don't need to change it. It's not as daunting as it looks. You've got some scope at the beginning to define the name. Again, I'm using Congress because I'm going to translate it. So you don't want to give the name just like something helpful in English because if you want to then make it Spanish, you're stuck because you have translated it. Call it Con Recipes, my name, the author, creation date, who owns the copyright, what's the license. Um, personally, I don't like to put my email address in the manifest file, so I'll tell people to go by the website. Uh, the URL, the version, and again, the description, but again, to be translated, so we don't put that in there. Um, is everybody familiar with the translation in the or the very Because I installed it, that's how it Because I installed this, I don't actually have the language file there. Um, so I need to look at uh, where I developed it. So if I was doing this from some sort of version, I'd actually have that language file in there. Excuse me. Yeah. So, you know, I may have given you the impression that we only have one hour. We have two. Yes, I will have two hours. Yeah. Well, two, yeah. two, 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 okay. It's too many times Right, so this is the language file. <clears throat> so this is the you have two language files here. Uh, which actually is worth looking at. You've got com recipes underscore any and the com recipes and dot sys dot any. The dot sys dot any, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, com dot sys dot any is what the install installer uses. And um, so when you install it, it loads down through that translation. Um, and then when you're going to actually have it installed and you're using it, it will use the .ini file. And you can see some of the strings we've been using. Com recipe is the name of our components. Recipes, recipes, and that's the overview categories. Uh, configure, recipes manager, component help. So they're basically strings that we're using. Um, now, here's a tip for you. What I always do is if I've got these files in my development environment, let me go back up to yeah. If this, was a, if this was coming from this version, you are going to have a language language folder in here as well. And what I would do is have a soft link from the language files to these .dot files from those to to the main languages folder in Joomla. So then, when I change the file inside the recipes, the Joomla file changes as well. So I don't have to go hunting around for where that language file is. It's somewhat completely different. So. Yeah, using soft links is a really helpful tip for making that easier to manage. <laughs> so back to the XML file. So here's the yeah, we said the recipes.xml uh, description. There it is the uh, recipes.xml description. So you can change that what HTML it is, and that's the block that appears. Now when the install <laughs> install something you get a nice description of it, that's very easy. <laughs> Um, right, install. So these are all standardized tags. You, know, you don't have to have them all in there. Um, they don't, uh, yeah, they don't all have to be there. But there are places on the wiki that describe all these, these lines in detail. Um, again, if you use this as a template, it would allow you to get started. I think it's got all the core things that you're going to need. Install SQL. This is the SQL script that's going to get run when you install it. Surprise, surprise. Uninstall, that's the SQL that's going to be run when you uninstall. So nothing too surprising there. This one's a little bit more subtle. We've got update scheme as a scheme of path. What that is, is when you update the component from one version to the other, it's going to go looking in that folder to say, do I need to run more SQL? So when I move from version 0.01 to 0.02, it basically will say, 
I'm now going to version 2, 0.02, and we'll say, do I have a schema file for version 0.02, and we'll run that. And we'll see that in action in just a minute. Um, then you've got folders and files for the size. So the way I've got this set up in my subversion, I'll show you here now. So this is the subversion version. Subversion version. Um, I've got assets in terms of the scale. I've got languages there um, with the files in it. And then, yeah. So I've got admin and site. So I've got two folders in site to version where repository is, you know, whatever the repository is, slash admin, and then slash sites. But when I export it, the files for the front end are all in a folder called site, and the files for the back end are all in a folder called admin. So then, to create a new one, I just zipped up. So once I've done this, I'll just show you how I create a package for this tool, um, which I think you've not seen before might be helpful. So, um, so these file names and folder names just match up with the files and folders that we've got. So the key thing is, you need, if the files are in the root, you need to name them all, but you don't need to name all the individual files and the folders, because the folder picks up everything inside it, including the subfolders. We have uh, languages for the front end there. Again, it says where the language file is. So it will look in the site subdirectory, and then it will look for a folder called language, engb, engb, conf, recipe, so forth. And then in the administration, so we've got a separate section there for administration files. First thing we're going to do is define the menus. And we can stick an image. So if you saw in the Back end here we have components. We've got a nice little, well, very, very little, which you can't even see, it's an mm -hmm. octopus, but a little octopus with a chef's hat on there, um, next to the menu item. That's being created by, that's being created by this image here. So this is the main menu item. And again, we're using com recipes, because that's going to be translated. And then we create two sub-menu items. Um, one is going to go to with option equals com recipes there. And then the next one is going to go to com categories with the extension of com recipes. So remember I said that we get everything for free from categories. That's how we're calling it. We're calling com categories. And the com categories, the categories component is doing all the category management for us. All we're doing is telling it, do it for um, recipes. And there's a little uh, tip here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a little tip here which I've left in, which is uh, this is something I picked up from Com Web Links, the XML file there. You have to escape all the ampersands in any URLs as an amp, uh, otherwise the XML will pass properly. So that's just a little tip. So. And then you've got your admin language files. So again, I'm not going to go explaining that too much detail, there are wiki pages about that, but if you have that in your root of the admin folder, you should be able to zip it all up and install, as you just saw, if you've got a web server on your own machine. Right, so now I'm going to show you how I do a, um, <coughs> a packaging up, since we're, we're on that topic. Um, in my case here, I've got subversion export, yeah. How many people, do people have got Windows? Who's got Windows machines? Something I recommend more than anything in the world for Windows is Tortoise Subversion. Tortoise SVN, as in, as in Turtle, but it's called Tortoise. Because it's European. Um, in, in the UK, and in the most of Europe, Tortoise is a land based animal, and Turtle is a water based animal. <laughs> um, there's a really, really good thing called Tortoise SDN, and that extends the Windows Explorer. Um, basically, when you're looking at any folder in your um, Windows um, file manager, if that's been um, checked out of sub 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 subversion, um, you can then do all sorts of things with it. So you can change the files, you can commit changes, you can merge them, you can export them. You know, have a look at it, it's very, very powerful. So I'm going to do something that NetBeans is not quite, the NetBeans version is not quite as good, um, but it, you know, it works, but it's, personally I think it's a bit more confusing. Does it tortoise track? Yeah. Huh? Does tortoise track to get it? Um, I don't know, because uh, last time I was developing 
back to your window, I would be looking at yes. So I'm sure you know there may be toddlers, yes. You know, the toddlers is so popular in Windows. It hasn't been made to support yet. And um, it will uh, it will be soon. Or somebody will have done something similar. So what I'm doing is, uh, in this case, in NetBeans, I, I export from the folder, whereas most of the time, in most tools, you export from the subversion repository. So I'm going to export now. Uh, and I've actually got the yes, export folder here already. So if we go in and out of the source files, see, we've got a new folder called recipes and it's called XXX. Now, I can't zip up inside NetBeans, so I've got to go to the File Manager, so I'm going to go to the window, and I'm going to go to Recipes export. So here we've got recipes and it's called XXX. So you see here we've got folders, and as you saw in the XML file, you've got a folder called admin and a folder called size. If I zip these up now, it's not going to install. And the reason it's not going to install is because the yeah, XML file, exactly. As soon as I just want to be quiet. I keep, I still, I still make the same mistake over and over again. <laughs> this file here, recipes of XML, is referring to two folders, admin and sites, but it's already in the admin folder. So just before you zip up, you just drag it, put it in there, take those three files, rest them, and now archive.zip is an installable. So it's as easy as that if you use this version. Yeah, I really would get this awesome version. It makes life so much easier. So back to the presentation. Yeah, the recipes, you can look at the CSS and the image files. You know, if you know a bit about CSS and things, you'll see what, what, what that's doing. Um, there are standardized ways of defining the icons in CSS. So basically, Joomla, if you, if you define your menu in a particular way, or you define your toolbar in the right way, it says it's expecting a, a CSS declaration of a particular source. And that's what it's called in there. So again, just, just have a look through them. Use something like um, Firebug or the uh, the inspector in Windows, i.e., or the most more than Chrome. They're basically all now got um, this tool where you can inspect the HTML and the DOM and the CSS, and you know, you'll see what you need to put into those files. Um, again, you know, one of the reasons I did this presentation is because I wanted to force myself to learn this stuff properly. Because you, know, <laughs> you uh, everybody, everybody sort of packs and changes, and they get comfortable with one particular way of doing it. You know, to be honest, I've, a lot of my coding is still being driven more by five stars than more by seven stars. So, you know, a lot of this stuff is, is learning. So, you know, just use this as a template. If this works, then then use it and use it as a basis for learning more stuff and expanding on it later. Um, yeah, it's the language files we've touched on, the SQL install file. Uh, this just says select one. <laughs> you're you're <laughs> getting ahead of yourself. Getting ahead of yourself. I looked at it. <laughs> Oh, yeah, because the reason I did that is because we actually haven't worked out what we're going to do yet. Oh, okay. um, with the, uh, when I was writing it, I didn't know what I wanted. So, um, yeah, install the next uh, the SQL file, just select one. So it's just, just to put one bit of less SQL in there. And the reason I did that is when we get to version 2, you'll see uh, why there was an issue there. Um, so, let's go back here. That's the back end. Is there any questions about the back end? You know, we're going to go through all that in more detail as we start down in the end, but if there's uh, something you have, if you're completely lost on something, you know, now's probably the time to ask it, or are you going to lose it? Front end, uh, same thing again, recipes.php is a landing script, controller, <laughs> same thing. Views, view.html.php is the main view script, the layer script, the language file. Um, two files that are different, the metadata and the root set.php. The metadata file, there are various XML files in the front end which control uh, how many items and things are created. Um, so that's really where, where those files come in. If you look at that metadata or XML file, in the front end you'll see it's got almost nothing in it. It's basically um, just a placeholder of the road. Um, the root.php is not going to do anything in version 1.01, but that's just going to root our URLs. So since the front end doesn't do very much, we're going to try and see something a little bit more interesting. So if, you, if you're running the code, you now have to uninstall version 1.1 and install version 2. 
Um, going on from here, we'll just install the new one on top of the old one. And I'll explain why in just a minute. So we're now into, um, who does want to do a original? It's all about creating, setting permissions and creating categories, so we can skip that. And we're now going to look at the, the foundations of the backend management of recipes. So what's changed? So I'm not going to show all the files again, I'm just going to show you what's changed. So now we have, if you look at the install of the MySQL file, this. So I will uninstall this now, um, but actually the reason for uninstalling, I'll do that. So now we have a um, create table that doesn't exist already, hash recipes. And um, I don't know if people were, uh, were you there in the session this morning? Um, I actually had missed it because I was having the last 10 slides for the presentation. Um, did you look, there was there some discussion about the standardized fields in the unified content model? Basically, there's going to be a set, set of uh, fields, which are going to be things like ID, title, alias, description, state, checked out, all those things. Basically, this is fairly standard. All we're doing with this is we're going to create a recipe which has a title and a description. We're not going to bother attaching separate lists of ingredients and linking those to separate tables. We can do that today to today. But that's basically the SQL for creating that table. We have an updates file uh, which does the same thing because we didn't have a table in the first version. So if you see the file here, it's called 0.0.0.2 SQL. Um, if we were updating it as opposed to installing a new one, it should be calling that. Now, I came up with a slight problem um, when I did the install. Um, so, going from version 1 to version 2, it wasn't for some reason creating the table. Um, so, that's why I suggested you uninstall and install. Um, so, we have probably got more to here, but you uh, should hopefully be running it now. You actually have that table installed. So, what's the next one? Yeah, the main view script, this has now changed slightly. So, remember before this display method just had like three lines to go to, adding the style sheets, setting the title, and then handing over the, the toolbar, creating the icon of the toolbar. So in the past, we just had these lines here, the style sheet line, the add toolbar display at the bottom. Um, so what we're now going to do is we're going to do three things. We're going to get the state of the model, get the items from the model, and get the pagination. So what does all that mean? The items are going to be the recipes, in this case, the recipes that we're uh, looking at, the category that we're looking at, the recipes. The state is basically the you know, what filtering we've applied, whether we're looking at the published ones, the unpublished ones, or filtering by a particular type, and the pagination is just page left, page right. Again, pagination, we're not going to, we're not going to do anything with the pagination code, we're just going to use the Joomla pagination code, we'll just inherit that and use it for us, we don't need to make any changes to that. So where are those, where's that magic stuff coming from, the items, where's it going to come from? It's going to come from the model, and I'm going to touch on that now. The folder of models, files, or recipes. And um, we, I think we talked about this before, didn't we? About the model, the, rest, the first bit of the name, recipes, is because of the top recipes, and then recipes at the end is because we're looking at um, the recipes view, numbers of recipes. So we're going to do two, several things here. We're populating the states which is basically um, getting things like the search. Um, we're going to basically want to search for recipes in the back end. So this is getting 
Have you all looked at seeing this method before get user statement request? What that does is, you know, we touched on J request get value from before from the URL. You know, in the back end, we do a lot of remembering the state of things. You know, if, you, uh, if you're searching for a recipe with soup in it, you, know, you want to go from page to page to page, and you need that filter to remember that you're looking for soups. So that information is stored in the user session. So that's what it means when it says get user state from request. It's saying, if the request holds a new value, use that. But if it doesn't, use the value from the session. And we do the same thing with the access ID, publish state, category ID, the language, and so forth. And we're sticking those into what's called the state of the model. And we're going to use that down here when we get this query. So if we go back to the view here, when we call get items, what it, that's doing is it's going to the model and it's saying, call method called get items. That method, we're not having to define in our recipe.php file. If you look at this file here, you won't find the get um, items method because the get items method is in, it's actually not even in jmodel list, it's in the parent class of that called jmodel. So we're, again, we're using the inheritance in object-oriented coding and Therefore, we don't have to define all the methods that we're using. We can reuse the ones that are there already. But that method there um, calls a method called get list query. So let me just do some more here. Let me show you how the debugger works for you. And in this file, I can right click and click on debug file, <coughs> just to show you how this works. And no. So if I now refresh this, that's actually not doing anything until I go back here. And you see that line now highlighted in green? If I continue, pulls through until it reaches the breakpoint I set in get this query. And I can go down to the bottom look at what's called the call stack. I can see that guess get, get this query is being called by jmodel get, get, uh, get query, which is from jmodel list get items. So let's look at that here. So there's, there's the method here in a file called model list. You see that's from the Joomla library. So we, we didn't write this, this is the Joomla library that's doing it. And in that, it's got this method here, get list query. And so we just change the get this query, so the get items just gets a slightly different list of items. We don't have to rewrite this method. So let's uh, step forward in that code. And uh, start there in detail. But um, what we're doing now is then getting our list of items. So this is using the Joomla query builder. And the first thing is we're setting the select, what fields do we want? Uh, this is being a little bit advanced. You, know, you, you don't actually have to have this get state, this select. It, what you really need is this bit here, the AID, A title, A alias, and so forth. Those are the fields we actually want. But the way that things have been written here, it allows us to set the state and say we want actually to change the set of fields that we want. So it's giving us scope in the future to produce a different set of fields by choosing the fields that we want. Does that make any sense? No, it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> just, you know, you just, just use it, sorry? You're putting the fields in memory, so it's going to eventually buy that. No, not quite. Let's say, you, say you've got a long, long list of columns. Say you've got 40 columns and you've got a narrow screen. You know in, in Windows, you have this little drop down to say which columns to show. You can invent, implement the same thing at the end of Joomla and say, just show me these four columns. And then that would populate this list select state. And instead of getting all the columns, it would just get the ones the columns we've actually asked for. And we're getting those, so selecting those fields from this table as a, and we're selecting, doing a join now of the language um, table. So we're trying to preempt making this thing multilingual by embedding that in the very beginning. Then we are. Seeing, has anybody got this checked out? So we're joining against the users. If they've got that checked out, we're finding who's got it checked out. Um, again, join your the assets um, table to see who's, who's actually got access um, to see that, which user levels have got access to see that. 
We also want to know the title of the category, so we can actually say, well, this, you know, we don't want to have to get our item and say, oh, we need to display the category, and do a separate query and get the title for the category. We join to the category table, and we get the category as well. And now, this is where that populate states method starts to come in. So I'll show you in the back end. Um, here, you see we've got filter by search, by text, by status, by category, by access. So, for example, in access, this is the, the user groups in Joomla. So, if we were to choose registered or public, when we came into this method here, uh, where we filter by access, the populate state method has gone off and it's done its bit, it's stuck into the model state. Uh, what access levels you want to filter by. So if we actually have said only show the archived items, there will be a level in this field, and then we stick an aware statement into our query as well. And um, then again, if you've got the right to configure, then we're allowing all the access, um, so you can see everything. If you haven't got the right to see everything, then again, we're getting the authorized view levels for that um, user. And we're saying, you know, just give just the recipes that they're authorized to see. So again, don't worry about understanding all of this. It's, this will work. And then once you uh, start playing with it, you can start refining it and so forth. And filter by state, same sort of thing again, filter by category. Um, filter by search, so we have a text field. We can search there based on the text field. And again, filtering by language, so if you have Spanish menus, uh, Spanish trans. Spanish language recipes, you can put those out and so forth. So that query then goes back to the get items, and then that ultimately comes <coughs> back to view.html, and we have our set of items. The model will give us a list of errors. If there are any errors, we then throw a 500 error, which is pretty extreme. We probably have a slightly um, less extreme way of handling errors and throwing you know, you'll use a 500 error, but that's what we've got in the moment. That then gets handed on to default.php. Now, remember before, this just had Hello World in it. Now we're doing something slightly different. We're doing a bit more advanced. So the first thing is, we're getting from the state of the model, so here, from the state, we're getting the list ordering, the directions, the um, whether or not they can order, the same order. And then we further further down here, you'll see at the top. See at the top here, we've got filter across there. That is being created by this here, yeah, the filter bar. So the search filter, which is the first one we're looking at. Um, you've got a label for the filter here, the J search filter label. Again, preempting having this thing available in many languages. And um, then you've got the uh, input box, which is a text field. It's called filter and it's search, which is a standard field name. So basically, for these fields, if you're going to reuse these, don't, don't change the names of the fields because you know, all the different files have to be consistent in terms of the names of the fields. And we need to know what value we're currently searching on. And so we get that from the state again. So the useful thing about the state setting in the model is that it's available when you're displaying it, when you're searching on it, it's basically consistently available through the whole through the programming that you're doing. The same thing works with the published categories and everything, so you can see all that down in the next block of code. So it's the same sort of approach. And then we have the list. Um, now, again, there's a useful thing in Joomla which allows great sorting. So if you know in a lot of Joomla um, uh, lists in the back end, you've got the ability to see here we're sorting by title. You know, we can basically click on any of these columns and uh, you know we've got one item there at the moment. Uh, but we can search, uh, we can resort those by just clicking on them. The way that works is uh, we call this method here jhtml underscore grid source. We give it a label, and here we give it a field name. So when we're sorting by title, we're saying right, we want a source, 
by field called A title, and the J global title, that's going to be the translation for the label at the top of the column, and then the direction and the order it remembers from some variables we fill in at the top. You just repeat that over and over again, turn it through, and all of a sudden you're missing the back end is immediately searchable. So again, if you use this as a skeleton for your opponent, just rename your fields and things, and add extra fields in, it'll all be sortable for you. Won't be, won't be, uh, won't be any difficulty. Unless you want to do something really clever. Take your thinking caps off. Right, where are we next? Oh yeah, and then the footer. Um, remember I said you were not going to do any coding of the pagination, but you know, we need to show it. So that's what we're doing here. The, uh, get this footer from the pagination method. Again, if you, want to, if you don't want to change the footer from the default, you know, left, right, how many pages there are, show how many. You just want to get this footer from the pagination. It knows about the model, it knows how to count the items, it knows how to page from left to right and everything. You just don't need to worry about it. You just stick that one line of code in and you can paginate your lists in the back end. Uh, then remember we filled in a variable called items in the view of HTML. Here we are, we're going to uh, loop over those items. And we're going to check various things like whether we can create, edit, manage, those items because we want to basically, you know, if you can't edit an item, then you're just going to show the name of it. If you can edit it, we're going to show a link to the edit. So here we've got uh, can edit, and if it can edit, then we have here if can edit, then show the link to editing. Otherwise, we show just the title in the next line. So again, I'm not going to show you all of this stuff. Um, you can reuse various things in here like this. There's a mechanism already built in for publishing and unpublishing items. So we don't need to rewrite code to publish and unpublish elements because we can just use this grid.publish bit of code. So again, use the skeleton and just change things if you need to change. There's no point reinventing, reinventing the wheel. Um, what else do we need to show from there? Yeah, we won't go into detail about that. But yeah. Have a look through the files, try and figure out what they're doing. You know, once you get your mind around it, you probably won't be surprised. Um, you'll figure it all out within the uh, best time you expect. Uh, so we touched on the models, we touched on the, yeah, the recipes table I haven't shown you. This is not doing very much at all. Um, again, no, I, have to, I have to admit, I have to put my hand up and say that um, I did borrow quite a lot of this code from existing Joomla components. So what I tried to do was to find good practice in some of the components that were there. Um, you know, there's a lot of sarcastic comments being made about the WebNix component, but you know, nobody used the WebNix. It was actually one of the best written of the components in Joomla. So I uh, used quite a lot of the WebNix code, and then where that wasn't doing things, I thought the best way. I, Took things from com content to com contact and so forth. So this is uh, this is basically the method that's going to handle binding the data from the request. So say you're saving information to this table, so it goes through the bind request, then to the store method here. And let's say you were, you were wanting to attach a, a series of um, ingredients to your recipe and you want to capture those all in the same form, then what you would do is you'd modify the bind statement, you'd modify the store statement here, so that you then create a list of these items and store them in, in succession. So you store the main recipe and then you store the um, items that come with them. Does that make any sense? So again, you probably don't need to change any of that code. Um, Unless you find it's not doing what you want, which is have a look at what it's doing, and you should be uh, on your way then. All right, no, nothing's changed in the front end. So, we talked about the SQL changes. Um, I'm not going to mention language file changes ever again throughout this talk, but basically, keep adding new strings. You know, every time you do something new, you're going to find you're going to keep adding new strings. Copy them over. Uh, so, we're going to fetch the real data using get state, get items, get pagination. We touched on all of that, and we're displaying the list, which should be empty, but it's not empty because I was installing this earlier on and I created one. If anybody's following this now, if you try to create a recipe, you find that it doesn't work. 
Um, but that's what we're going to do in version 3. Oh, talking about version 3. Here we are. So now there's no need to uninstall because if you look at, this is a useful tip for you, if you look at the XML file, Well, it's actually probably something quite important to understand. Okay. See at the top, we've got a method equal upgrade. Okay? If we didn't have that method equal upgrade, and we tried to install, Juno would give you an error message to say, oh no, this demo already exists. Um, what the method upgrade means is that we can actually upgrade the command without installing it, and potentially using our data. Um, right. So, you're following along, install version 3 to the top. I'm trying to get the speed up here. So, I'm now going to finish our back end uh, editing integration of um, recipes. So, we now have a new control file, recipes.php. And what this does is it gets a uh, model. Um, so you don't need to worry about that particularly. We'll touch that in just a minute when we get there. But the model is a model for single recipes. So before we, uh, we have one model file, we now have two. We have recipes and the recipe. So the recipe model is going to allow us to get one item. And it's going to do all sorts of other things. It's going to be able to check the uh, permissions to do various things like can edit state, can delete, and so forth. So we're going to use some of those things. Um, and then the get item, again, I probably didn't need to define all of these. I don't think we just put a few uh, um, ones we needed to change um, in there. And what next? Oh, yeah, this is interesting. Um, Recipe the next one. I've got time to go through all of this in detail. But in the models folder, in the forms subfolder, we have recipe.xml. This basically is the JFORM, um, you see that, web.xml at the top, uh, where I borrowed, where I cut and paste. So again, <laughs> now even if you do a lot of coding, you know, a lot of the time you're cutting and pasting. You're using something that works, and you do, do something different. So this is basically the definition of the different fields. We've got the ID field, we've got the type field, the alias. We're defining what type those fields are, what class we're going to apply, how big it's going to be, the label, the description, whether it's required or not. And again, there are, there are quite a few different fields. You can actually define your own field types. But you know, if you're just doing this with a bit of standard, you can take this as a template that I did from WebLinks. And this is then going to be used by Juno to create the form, which I'll show you in just a second. And we now need the view file for the single recipe. What's that going to do? Here, same thing again. What we've got in is this method display, which is running some method called uh, add toolbar. And surprise, surprise, it's doing the same thing we had before. Get state, not get items this time, just get item, because we need to get the one. And it's sending it off to the display method. And the display method this time is going to be edit as opposed to defaults. And that is here. And this is, again, the forms we've got for us. Uh, yes, actually, didn't. so before we have pagination, so I skipped over that. Remember here we have get state, get items, get pagination, and we have a list. Here we're getting something called the form. Again, we don't need to do any coding to get the form. Juma knows which one it needs to get. Um, because it's coming from the item model. So it's getting the form, we have the form, and we now use this. So we can get the label, and get the input for the title, the alias, the category ID, and so forth. And basically, this page is really, really simple to put together, and it's just calling get label, get input. Over and over again, what we end up with in Joomla is, where I create, uh, actually, I need to create. I 
So do you, I don't know if anybody noticed then, I was unable to add a new recipe because the, the new button didn't appear. And the reason the new button didn't appear was because I didn't have any categories. So it's clever enough to know not to allow me to create new recipes in terms of creating categories. So it would probably be a good idea to put a message to users because you know, when they, they say, why can't I create new recipes? You're going to form small messages, one after the other, aren't you? So it's probably an idea in the view file if there's no categories to just display a message to say, create a category first. I'll leave that one to you. Why can't you have uncategorized categories? Yes, you could. You could. We haven't defined it that way. I guess you could. Yeah. Water is probably an undefined. Yeah. Um, right, okay, so we're going to create a new recipe. New here. So, title, labels, category, status, all these fields, these are all defined in that form. And the publishing options, so we go back to the form here. Yes, the publishing options are not in here because the publishing parameter options come from we had this with the div with the left float right width. So these are standardized class declarations in the back end of June. So we've got here the parameters. Okay, now at the bottom, there's this. We've got no template parameters. Now, we haven't actually got any parameters, so this is actually going to do nothing. We'll come on to parameters as well as when we get to version 5, because at that point, we're going to stick an image into our recipe. So, we've got to, or we've got to, have the suit set up on our own. That's the presentation. Yeah, so on to version four. It's only going to be a little bit faster after we read the first one. So we still always know. Oh, actually, let's just go, go back to the I'm not going to show you now, but basically, new and edit, publish, unpublish, trash, archive, check in, check out, all that stuff now works for us because we followed the pattern and we just and it even checked the permissions to do all that because we had that in our recipe model. Um, so, <laughs> of course, without too much coding, still takes more time than it will do in the future. Um, so I'm going to install version 4. What did I say version 4 is going to do? Parameters and options are back in. Menu options. Right, okay. Parameters and options. So you can see what we're going to be getting to. <coughs> we now click on options here. We're going to have two tabs. We have recipes overview. So this is now going to be a couple of options for our main menu items. So where we want to show the category type. So basically in the front end of the site, we're going to show combinations of categories our recipes and list of individual categories. So we want to show whether we want to show the decide whether we want to show the title, the description, the category image, whether we want to display empty categories, and whether we want to show the numbers of recipes in any particular category. So let's save that. So I can show you how to do that. But again, it's very, very simple. That's just an XML file. And then the next thing we're going to see is menu options. So we're going to create a new menu item for the content, that new menu item. And if we like, oops. And to choose the type. Here we've got recipes menu, manager. Now we're going to call it frogs. And we can select a particular category. So we can, yeah, if we had a frogs category, we can have recipes for frogs. So we can show all the recipes. Let's go with that. There's another thing I'm going to show you how we did. Again, most of that is XML. And the front end navigation during your recipes. So that would be the most complicated thing in this section. So, config options for menus and uh, other options for the backends. I've done very easily. Don't we 
Ready? Remember this file config.xml? Before it had uh, just permissions. See here? Permissions at the bottom? That's what we had in it before. But now we've added in show category title, show, category, show description, show description image, show empty category, again with the translatable labels. Um, the type is either in all of these is a list that we find hide and show. So again, that's all we had to do to get those permissions. And for doing the menus, um, you do that via the front end. You inherit all that stuff as well, but in the front end, you get a file in the views folder, in the recipes folder. This is somewhat confusing. But basically, you're wanting a menu item to show recipes in the front end. So the place that's defined is in the front end file, in the recipes view, and in the template is called file called default XML. And that basically, um, then we have the request where you want to show by a particular category, well that's what we've got here um, on the right. And then that, that's followed by the parameters that we defined in the config file in the back end. And the government journal, you get the option now to show, use the, to inherit the global permissions or hide and then show. Well, that's what we're doing here. When we had show category title in our config.xml file, or we can have hide show, we can also use global value. So that's going to inherit it from that. So in essence, that's what we needed to do to define the menu parameters and the overall parameters of the component. And um, yeah, this one has a bit of a bit sloppy coding. Uh, Recipes.php in the views folder, you can just delete because uh, uh, it's got nothing helpful in it at all. Um, then there are view files, um, which basically handle the main layout of the recipes and categories. And again, that's just doing the same sort of stuff we've been seeing over and over again. Um, go to the front end. Yeah, we're displaying. Remember the back end, what we were doing? We were doing get items and um, get uh, states. Well, we're doing the same here. We're getting, we're getting step, get states. And um, we are then point prepared document. All that's doing is setting the title on the page, doing the CSS. You can see that at the bottom. I don't really need to show you that now. We're doing things like getting the state on the category. And the reason we do that is because what I want to do is I don't want to show a long, long list of category, uh, recipes. So what I'm going to do with this is just show the categories. And if I've chosen a category, I'm going to show the recipes from that category. So fairly obvious. So what I'm doing here is saying, if I've selected a category, I need to then get the items in that category. Otherwise, there's no active category I'm set to the list of items to false. Again, check on the errors. We then assign those into the, the view which then make them available into the default layout. The default layout does a bit about just showing the description. Basically, um, if there's an active category, we show the description and the detail of the active category. And then if there's category selected, then we go off and we um, display the summary of the categories that you can choose. If you have an active category, as well as showing the category, you see here we've got no template recipes. And that just goes off and loops through the recipes, showing the recipes. So I'll show you that now, actually. It's not really that exciting because uh, we've got, there's a box menu item. And let me show. So let's Oh, yes, I'm going to write this is one of the ones I created earlier as well. I didn't have a category in this. Seriously, it's not. There you go. So we have, we have, we have got an active category selected because our menu did have one. So normally, if I had selected one, you'd see the title, the description, and the recipe. So here we have some of the categories. So it's category, name, the description, and the number of recipes in that category. So we're going to select on that. 
and we see cycle category start soups and starters and a list of the individual recipes. I can get that individual recipe by using a slightly different view. So if you see, actually let's see if I've got a set one, which is not very helpful. Let's just save the set. So here, we remember, notice that the URL at the top, we've got common recipes, view equals recipes. Because we're using view equals recipes, we view equals recipes, it's using the files in the recipes view, it's using the recipes controller, it's using the recipes model, and it does all that for us. Uh, if I click on soup to starters, um, and then on turtle soup, you see here now, the URL is view equals recipe, as opposed to recipes. So it now uses the recipe view, as opposed to the recipes view, and the recipe model, and so forth. Yes. Um, yes. Sorry to interrupt you for a second. I have to leave to the airport. Have fun, everybody. Thanks a lot. Have a good one. It was great. Okay. Actually, something I probably should show you. Um, this is not, this is getting into slightly subtle things, which you will need to be able to do. See here we've got a third model, we've got a categories model. And if you want to look at the frogs, we do two things at once. So actually, if we had more categories, you'd see it more obviously. But let's say we had a subcategory of soups and starters. Let's say we had you know, vegetarian soups, um, meat soups, fish soups, so three separate categories. Then we would have this in the category, and then across the bottom, we would have our three separate categories. So we're doing two, we're getting two separate sets of data. <coughs> we're getting recipes, and we're getting categories. And the way we do that, we need to get two models to be able to do that. And the way that happens in the code is, I don't remember correctly. Um, I'm basically saying, if, the, if we're looking for recipes, as opposed to recipe, then we are here getting a model, a category model, and we're setting that into the view, and it'll pick up the name of that as the category model. So that then, when we're in the views file, the recipes, Here, we're doing this statement here, which is get model, get state on the category um, file. Much about the category model. 
well, we haven't defined the actual model because we've got to get items there. What we're not defining is the table. We know nothing about the category table because actually we use a helper function for that for these categories. And for this, we just define the category table and the extension. So again, you will highly likely to need to use this little trick um, if you're going to be using the categories. But basically, what it allows you to do is to use the Joomla categories table. That then knows it needs to call a helper file for recipes. And you know, that file is a file that's called category within the helper's folder. So there are various files you end up putting in this helper's file, helper's folder. They have special names that will get used in a particular way. I think we'll have one more example of that just before we end. So, who's still with me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the idea, I'm not expecting you to really understand this. The slides will be available. You've got the versions of the code. Um, Seems so like the use the thing is, install the PHP debugger. Stick, stick some breakpoints in the code. See, I've got no idea why this code is there. Stick a breakpoint in. Try running a few things. If it stops there, think, well, why did it stop there? What, look at the source tree. See why it was called. Um, I mean, that's how I learned a lot of this stuff myself. So. Um, I probably not have time to go through the Ceph URLs, but that should be fairly explanatory, self explanatory. If you look at the rooster.php file in the front end, you'll see how you can create the Ceph URLs and you can change that um, to put the title of the, um, of the uh, recipe into the URL and so forth. Um, yeah, we talked about the uh, public place model in the back as well. Yeah, right, on the home space. <laughs> so, I should have the most of the copy of this <laughs> So, remember this version 5. So, you know, you can see we already had the, the core of a way of navigating and um, handling recipes. What, what we didn't have was a way to search for recipes or a way to create recipes in the front end, which we're going to want to have. So let's get this stage. Going to do for us, and the other thing we're going to do is add an image to our recipe. We want to nicely format and so forth. So what we're going to do first is add the image. And that's handled by the recipe.xml forms. So we're using the XML file to define the form that we're using for creating our recipes. So if we go into the back end. Models, forms, as we let us know. Right at the bottom, we have a, group, a new field set of fields called params with a field set that we use. We're going to call it basic, we can call it media, we can call it whatever we want it. Give it a label, and we're going to load an image of type media. What have we got again? The um, translatable labels. So now we're in the back end, and we go into the rest of the dimension. We can then add a new recipe. See, we have now our recipe photos and the recipe image. We can select that. And again, you, you can control where the media. Again, is you, you can control when subdirectory. There's an argument sticking to the next file to say, just get me the images from the recipes. So the photos we can find them here. Um, So now, if you go back to frogs. So we have starters and soups. We put in starters and soups. And what have I done wrong here? 
So the only complicated thing about that is that we are stuck with this thing called a uh, called a form. Now, why is it a form? Because before we defined all our things, meaning sensible things like recipes and recipe, and we were in control of that. But Jupiter has forced us to use a folder called form by default. Uh, I'm sure, you know why it's not figured out yet how. Um, So, when I got to this point, I was thinking, why is it using form? I didn't know why it was using form, so I used the same thing again. And I put a very point into the edit of the HTTP file. So we were seeing how this works. It's a little bit subtle. Oh, by the way, this easy X debug. You see here, you can see the bottom of the screen. Oops. There's a little green icon, and it's kind of got a little orange spot next to it. It's actually like the icon is supposed to represent a bug. When it's got the orange icon, it basically means that the debugger is active. I switched off here, so I switched clicking on it. What it means is that uh, look at the content. And we go, let's go back. So now I'm going to click on Add. Great, that's good. Um, yeah, I'm 
actually get overwhelmed. I don't know why it's confusing myself. It's actually not only the edit of the I'm just using a slide. It's an edit function. So I'm in the recipe to control, and I'm cutting this great volume of the edit function of the edit. If you looked in the model on the get items, the get list query method, you'll see that um, when you get to version 5, that method has been changed and the query has been made a bit more announced. Can you understand this? Well, oh. my name is template, same as for 12.5, but it's up to you. Right. Just here. Well, we, we've got, I've got probably another time to talk about questions, so that's fine. Okay, thanks. Um, Yes, yeah, so if you look in the get list query method in the model, you'll see that I've changed it. And again, it's slightly subtle, it's worth looking at because the categories in Juno 1.7 uses the e, you know, use a nested hierarchy. So basically, you have any number of depths, and there's a mechanism for finding all the child items. And if you look at that query, it took me a few minutes to figure it out, but basically, there's a way of counting all the items in all the sub categories all in one go. Um, which made life a little bit easier. Um, and yeah, searching again, if you look in the helpers categories, it allows you to search by categories uh, name, so you can do that. And um, there's one thing which I can finish, which is uh, when you're in the recipe item list, it doesn't find recipes. So if I'm at the top level, so let's show you that So if I go to frogs, So I'm going to search here for fruit. So he's only giving us one um, category now, it starts as a soup. So here, that's what I'm basically saying about the change in the uh, search, it basically searches in the combined search for item counts and categories for items with fruit in the title. You'll we'll see that if you look at the model query. If I now try and search for fruit here, actually if I try to search for um, grapes, which you not mentioned anywhere, you'll see it's still throwing up fish fruit soup because I basically haven't done that bit of query. Yeah, but obviously that should also be filtering as well, so that's a bit of homework for you. Right, so um, tips. You know, these things I think are very important. Um, softening your language files makes life a lot easier. You don't have to keep changing files in the wrong place and then forgetting that you haven't changed them in your source files and whatever. Put your version control inside the, the development tree. What that means is 
here, when I've got this folder here called recipes, I do a checkout inside my development environment. So I've got my Juno 1.7 install, pull recipes there. This is going to be a um, subversion checkout of the site folder. I do the same thing, the administrator um, checks out the admin folder. So then I can see my life changes and subversion, they're all in sync. Uh, so you use you sub you use subversion to check out the live folder. So obviously this is not a live server. This is my development server. Uh -huh. So I have my development server. I want to see I make changes in the live environments of my development live as in the development live uh -huh. environment. Yeah. So I can make my changes, my code changes, and I can check them out. I mean, I can commit them from there. I don't have to right copy them somewhere else. Right on the live development. That's on the yeah. yeah. server. Yeah. Okay. Again, another useful tip is to make sure you get this application debugger. Because as you saw, if you've done development of modules and plugins before, you'll, you'll have no problems really. It's something very fancy without a debugger. But I would say you really can't do this sort of stuff without a debugger. I know some people do it using um, echoing outputs to the screen, but you know, when you've got six files with the same file name in separate different locations, and you're trying to figure out where you are and using print, trace, debug, this, that, and the other word, so you're quickly going to get lost. The debug is definitely <laughs> So, that's it. Five minutes to spare. So, any questions? Um, before you said something about the helper files, um, and I kind of missed what the point was about that. I think it was version four. Right, let's see. Um, Oh, there's a couple of help files. There's an icon help file, which um, has a great time. Yes, so basically, we're we'll, we'll doing a search by um, title of an element. We're looking for soups with fruit in the name. Um, we also want to look for, for categories with um, fruit in the name of the category. Now, we haven't defined uh, that method anymore. Basically, what the, this load method does is yeah, I can't remember. I can't remember. I can't remember. This method does get called by the Juma category. Again, I'm sticking in a great point. Okay, so it's basically what you're saying is the helper files are a good place to put code that you might need to call. No, no, no it's not really. That. Joomla has a number of sets of helper files that if they are there, it will use. So they have to have a very particular name. So I mean, um, this category file uh, has to be, the class name has to be recipes rest categories. And the Joomla categories models will use this recipes categories file if it's there, and it will call methods from it. It has to be called the right thing and it has to be in the right place. <laughs> so I, to be honest, I will probably do a search by Joomla help the files, and then there's probably a wiki page that lists all the different sources and what they do. Okay. Thank you. Again, I, I, I don't know all the stuff from it. No, As I said, one of the reasons I did it was to call myself learn. Yeah. Obviously, I didn't learn this bit properly. <laughs> But actually, actually what you, you were asked was very helpful. Right. Yeah. So, do people feel that might give them a foundation to be able to do the basic environment? You know, you're obviously, you know, if this isn't um, something production ready, but hopefully you'll find this skeleton that you can uh, adapt and use. And if you have to, you know, just keep running through it, figure out what's going on, and comment out bits of code if it stops working. And, Someone's being used to something. <laughs> Were there any resources that you found very, very helpful? Um, for what? Comment using the basically using some of the code that's already there. I personally, I find it difficult to find information about development. 
of um, growth in the line. Um, yeah. Yes. The searching, the searching in Wiki, I think, is not great. Yeah. Um, finding information you want. The old documentation system, I've you know, spoken to various people about this who were involved in Wiki, but it's, um, it's, it's going to be tricky to change that. There was um, one or two good books on 1.5 that I remember, but 1.6 came out, and I don't think that any of the books have really um, until recently hit the shelves, and already now we're talking about 2.5. Yeah. And uh, so it's, it's changing faster than it does. Yes. It's which, which is kind of scary. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, no, the thing is, you no, shouldn't think about it that way, because 2.5. Still yeah, so 1.7 and 1.6. 1.7 was basically 1.6, really? It's just, at that point, you know, there wasn't that much difference between 1.6 so and 1.7. And the same thing is going to be true about um, 2.5 from the 1.8. There's going to be 1.8. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. The point is, it's not a step jump. So, all the stuff I'm showing you now will work at 2.5 because it's the same. Because yeah, 1.6 is 2, and 2.5 yeah. is 2. 2. 1.5, and 2. 5, so it's all... And a lot of things change at that point. 2.5 is not going to be a big change from 1.7. It's going to be a language file for that, too. Yeah. Huh? I think we need a language file for that, too. 1.6 is 2. Yes. Yeah. So, yes, yeah, so I think the slides are going to be available online. So, um, well, that'd be good. so, so how about if you, um, you wanted to make the search all AJAXy and all that? What would you have to do? What would you have to do for that? Um, I'm trying to think. I don't know if there's anything that needs to be done. Um, you might want to search for, just going to start typing in mm -hmm. um, in the search box. You might want to have a drop down list here for uh, in here. By the time you got up to three characters there, mm -hmm. but it would give you a list of all the ones. Yeah. Uh, maybe a search by category, and it would give you a list of categories and how many ones there were in each of them. Basically, I don't use the APHS, that's what's fine, I tend to use JSON. Mm -hmm. Send an uh, HTTP request to get a JSON um, for that. Okay. That's getting some subtlety because, in terms of in the views, you know, we have these files here. They've all got this name here, view.html.php. The HTML <coughs> refers to the sort of output you're expecting. So if you're doing an RSS feed, this would be called view.feed.php, mm -hmm. remember If you're doing a, a JSON, I'm not sure in 1.7 whether it be dot, is it dot JSON or PHP, and you basically it would travel through the code, you give it the right sort of send right request using root tools, because that there's a way of creating a JSON request using root tools. Mm -hmm. the information in, um, travels through, when it gets to here, it outputs the information in JSON format, then your JavaScript on the other end handles it and displays the list. Now, I don't think, and I can't be wrong, I don't really know that there are lots of pre built helper things for the JavaScript to make that easy on the Joomla end, I mean on the browser end, yeah. certainly the PHP end, especially for, it would be good to have a set of standardized libraries for JSON searches and stuff. Um, one thing to bear in mind though is that the sort of bootstrap, the index.php and building the framework and the authentication and everything, the whole way through to JSON. Mm -hmm. When you're trying to do that in real time, when you're typing, um, there's a lot of processing going on that doesn't actually need to get done. So, personally, has anybody used um, JVS since we had lots of JVS? For some of the things like the find user method, um, when you're doing um, invites in the uh, attendance plugin, yeah. that uses a JSON. I don't use the whole of Joomla, I use a very small um, platform application. Because I don't need all that yeah. whole structure of Joomla. I just need to get very quickly through to the database, find the number of matching users. Mm -hmm. And um, so then the load time on that is, you know, when it might be 
three a second go to another tumor. Mm -hmm. Like, go five a second if you don't have all the yeah, yeah. stuff on the back side. So, okay. something to bear in mind if you're doing chest. Okay. Anything else? Glad that we got this one on tape. Yeah. Glad this one actually worked uh, pretty good for a new stream. Even with just the little battery tripod. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And the bean bag will be good. Yeah. I should have brought the bean bag. I didn't know if we could get out of this camera going today. Yeah, people are available. Thank you.